Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe, and I wanted to talk about Champagne and Bullets. This is also known as Get Even and Road to Revenge, depending on, I think, where you live in the UK or Canada. I'm pretty sure, I want to say it was Get Even in America, but I don't remember. Um, I had run into this a couple of years ago at a thrift store called Amvets, which has like um, used movies and games and furniture and all types of stuff. It was sitting on top of the bookshelf with the DVDs, pretty much out of sight. I don't know how I saw it. I picked it up and it was a DVD, but it was like a cardboard sleeve DVD like you get from the dollar store. They used to have those years ago. Lots of martial arts flicks. Anyway, it was all scratched to hell. So I was like, this looks really funny. I think it was called Road to Revenge, but it could have been Get Even. I'm like, this looks really funny, but it's so scratched. I don't know if it's going to work, and I really don't want to waste my money. So to my surprise, Vinegar Syndrome puts out, you know, Blu-rays all the time, underground movies, and the most recent one, which is a limited VSA release, which I think they did four or 5,000 of, if I remember correctly, happens to be Champagne and Bullets, a.k.a. Get Even or Road to Revenge. So if you've seen... <laughs> It's kind of hard to describe this movie. <clears throat> Overall, it's an action movie with some drama. But if you've seen things like Neil Breen movies or Tommy Wiseau, kind of even like Samurai Cop, where it's a action flick, not as over the top or crazy like Samurai Cop with the special effects and the explosions and the silly kind of offbeat humor, not like that, but it has that sort of action element to it. However, it's more of a vanity project, just like... Tommy Wiseau, or more so Neil Breen, but without the sci-fi stuff. So the story is, uh, the main character is John D. John D. Hart. He's a, I think he's an attorney in real life, and he wrote and directed this movie himself. Uh, I think he actually directed it with someone else, but he, he was part of the team directing it. And it has Wings Hauser, who you may recognize, who looks sort of like Kevin Nash in a way, and... Um, William Smith, who plays a great bad guy. I've seen him in a lot of lower-budget films. He's in this as well. I want to say he was in Deadly Prey, but I could be wrong. Um, anyway, John D. Hart's character, Wings Hauser's character, and what's it? William Smith uh, are all cops, and they're going after these drug dealers or something. And William Smith's character's name is n n not Nomad and not Norad. It's Normad, I think it is, or no, Norm, Normad. His last name is Normad, so they call him Normad throughout the whole film. And he sort of turns on his partners at the very beginning of the movie because he's trying to, I think, uh, do something underhanded. I don't remember if it's steal the drugs, something. And he also gets Wings Hauser's character shot and doesn't want to help him or save him. He just doesn't really give a crap. So... The other two guys turn on him, and he turns on them, and they in turn either quit or get fired. I think they get fired. Um, so now, Wings Hauser and John DeHart's character are no longer police officers. Meanwhile, and this is the weird part, Normad, who plays a good bad guy, by the way, becomes a judge, a satanic cult leader, and a drug dealer. All of these things, he's all of them. He's like the big bad. And they're trying to stop him. He's going after them, getting them in trouble, obviously, after, after um, you know, to get them fired from the police force. The main character, John DeHart's character, it's like Bodie or Brody. I want to say it's Bodie. He, uh, he reunites with his ex-girlfriend and wants to get married to her. It's just crazy, but everything is so weird and unbelievable in a way, just like Neil Breen movies. And there are some action sequences, some fight sequences, everything's pretty bad. Uh, cheesy special effects, people getting shot. Not as action-oriented as Samurai Cop, but has sort of that similar humor in a way that like you take away from it. Though Samurai Cop tried to be funny, this tries to be serious. That's the best part of it. The whole movie doesn't really have a, a tongue-in-cheek thing going on. It's trying to be humorous. I saw a great post on Facebook this morning where this guy said, I bought Champagne and Bullets because everyone was recommending it and I watched it this morning with my wife. 
what is wrong with you people? Why would you recommend this? And now my wife is probably gonna leave me. And it cracked me up, because if you don't know what you're getting into and you think this is like a straight, hardcore action movie, it's not. It's sort of in the vein of something like, um, was it was it L.A. Wars from Vinegar Syndrome? But that was even more goofy. Like, they kind of knew what they were doing. This, this isn't. Um, there's just so much stuff mashed into the movie, and John DeHart's character has this girlfriend who looks... Here, the other thing is, John DeHart must be like... Maybe in his... I, he looks like he's in his early 60s. He's older looking. He has this old-fashioned haircut. The movie came out in 93. He looks like someone from the 70s or 80s. And he's got to be in his easily in his 50s. His, his skin is kind of leathery in a way. He looks older. His girlfriend is like way more attractive than he is, though she's not 20. She's probably in her 30s or early 40s at the time. So she's like younger than him, it seems. It, the whole thing is just like pure vanity. He's She's constantly getting naked. He has a bunch of sex scenes with her where he's like rubbing ice cubes on her nipples or groping her. And, you know, she's trying her best. And he, the love scenes, like they're trying. But you could tell he was like, ooh, I'm going to... I'm gonna write this in so I can get naked with this woman and rub her boobs on camera. I mean, it's it's just funny. And then one scene, they're drinking out of champagne flutes, and he's you know about to get down and dirty, and he hands his wine glass to someone off screen. You see a hand come in and grab the glass instead of him like put it on a maybe the desk or the table and walk, like go back to the sex scene. He hands it to someone. You see a hand come in and grab it. It's just great, and it's such a goofy silly movie. I think they mentioned that, and I don't know if it's true, that Wing Hauser's char Wings Hauser's character seems like probably inebriated through half the film. He's saying crazy stuff and he just seems over the top. If you like things like I've mentioned, especially Samurai Cop or LA Wars, but not as funny, you know, not as tongue in cheek, Champagne and Bullets is a high recommendation. If you have a couple of drinks in you and you're hanging out with your buddies and you want to laugh at the absurdity of the characters, the dialogue, the weird situations, and just that, you know, again, just like Neil Breen, John DeHart is at the center of everything, and he's the best at everything, and everything bad that could happen to him happens to him. Like, it's just, it's crazy. Judge, police officer, Satanist, drug dealer. Cops don't become judges. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't happen. Not in real, not in the real world, but it's just very amusing. The movie's amusing, it's it's a bad action drama, and if you like bad movies, you should see it. If you like good movies, don't see it. Um, it was $28 currently at Vinegar Syndrome. I don't know if this is going to go up in price because the sale is now over, but it is in July going to go back on the store, and they'll try and clear out whatever they have left. I They had a lot left when I was purchasing it still. It wasn't like it was uh, out of stock. So, expensive movie. Uh, comes with this special slip cover. I'm not a slip cover guy, but it's it's numbered. I think they're I want to say fourth oh six thousand six thousand or eight thousand six thousand it looks like here. So there's six thousand of these. I have thirty seven hundred and forty five. I don't know if you can see that. This doesn't really do much for me, but people love these things on the uh, vinegar syndrome forums. So. Anyway, people even sell those slipcovers for more money than the movie sometimes because the movie will come back out on a standard release. I don't know if it's going to with this. I don't think so because it's a VSA, not just a regular limited edition. And usually just the slipcovers are limited edition. And um, then the slipcovers will be sought after and someone will sell the slipcover for 50 bucks because someone wants a complete movie with the slipcover. So pretty amusing. But um, trying to think if I wanted to mention anything else. It says it was produced over two decades. So I don't know if that means in the 80s and 90s they filmed, and that's part of the weird issue. Um, this was a 16 millimeter cut, um, and then there's two Road to Revenge and Get Even re-edits on here. So those are on here too. 2K scan, commentary with writer, director, producer, and star John DeHart. Brand new audio interview, re-edited Road to Revenge, re-edited to Get Even. So I guess those are the original American and Canadian cuts, I think, or UK and Canadian cuts. A video trailer, limited edition of 6,000. 
double-sided posters in the box. It's just the, the cover art from those. Reverse artwork and English subtitles. Again, if you like bad movies, definitely recommend it. If you don't like bad movies, you will not like it. So, let me know, guys, if you've seen Champagne and Bullets or if you even picked up this Vinegar Syndrome release. Thank you guys for watching. It's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. Be good.